Hey guys, a quick little introduction before we get into the actual video. I wanted to throw this out here. Uh, you guys are going to get a whole lot of really awkward transitions and cuts in the video. The reason for that is I have tried on five separate occasions to record this video and every single time a whole bunch of stuff goes wrong to where I've had to cut out tornado sirens and dogs barking and games crashing and it's not your internet. It, it's the video itself that's going to be jumping around. I cannot get around that. <laughs> I sincerely apologize. But other than that, enjoy the video. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, depending on where you are in the world. My name is MSU Morgan. Welcome back to Backbone RP, where today we're doing things a little tiny bit lot different. Um, this is not a patrol episode. It's not a funnies episode. It's not... Actually, it's not even an RP episode in general. This is not necessarily a tutorial, but a helpful guide to the 5M side of Backbone RP. Backbone RP has absolutely blown up, in a good way, in a good way, hold on, I thought about what I said, uh, has, has blown up in terms of members, and we have a lot of different people coming in, we ended up gaining 200 members in a matter of like, I think it was 7 days, um, which is absolutely sane, I appreciate every single one of you, I'm sure our other executive staff and our server directors appreciate you as well, um, because that is absolutely insane, our server has grown so much. But with that being said, we have a lot of people who are coming in and they've either never been on a 5M server before and they're using Backbone as their first experience in roleplay on the 5M side of things, or we have people that are in other 5M servers, but they run completely different than our server does. And that's, that's understandable. Every 5M server is different, and it's definitely a lot different if you are coming from a console RP or have never RP'd in GTA at all. It's a lot to take in. I know I came from Xbox. So coming to 5M, it was a lot of information at once, and I wish that I had a video like this to help me through the server itself because I ended up for about seven days hopping in the server when no one was on, figuring out everything by myself. It was a mess. It was not fun. Um, I'm still every day learning new things about the 5M server that I had no idea about. So, making this video in hopes that it'll help you guys out. Uh, I'm going to try and include everything that I wish I would have been told when I first started roleplaying on 5M, just to kind of help you guys get to where you want to be and you're not, you know, in a session, have no idea what you're doing, and are trying to figure stuff out while an active RP session is going on. With that being said, I have just loaded into the server. Um, I have spawned at the Rebel Radio Station, which I have for the past few times. I don't know if this is like the default spawn point or what's going on with that. I am default Danny, and I don't think it gets any more just joined 5M than right now. Before we get into any of the menus or anything, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, uh, we're going to go over the interface. So we're already here. we got nothing going on. Go over the interface. We've got a lot of things on our new interface. Uh, bottom left hand corner is obviously your GTA map, it's the little green bar is your health, the little blue bar is your armor. I don't have armor on so that's not lit up, but that's fine. Uh, first thing you see, big red letters, cooldown, currently says none. What that is, is that's actually our priority cooldown. We have it set to 20 minutes, so every 20 minutes a priority can be conducted. We ask that you use this sparingly, um, and what I mean by that is if you've just conducted a priority, don't wait the 20 minutes, and then as soon as that hits zero, do another priority. Give everybody a chance to do a priority. We do enjoy high-risk calls. We, we enjoy shots fired and pursuits and, and all of that stuff that requires more than one officer on the scene, but it does get annoying, both when we have too many of them going on at once or when we have them too close together. So, be courteous, give everybody a chance, and uh, you have to abide by the cooldown. Obviously, right now it says none. The reason that is, I've just loaded into the server. I don't think there's anybody else in the server. If there is, it's a probationary civilian just trying to figure things out. Um, nobody's been in session since last night. Session's not started up yet, which is why I'm taking this time to make this video. In the bottom right-hand corner, that's going to be... That's going to tell you everything you need to know about your voice chat. So... My bottom right hand screen says mumble, normal. 
Warning, not connected to Mumble. The reason that is, I have my voice chat. In-game turned off. You are not going to get that warning message. But you are going to get the Mumble Normal. Now, it's either going to be Mumble Normal, Whisper, or Shouting. And what that does is that changes your voice proximity. If you're ever on a scene and you're having issues hearing someone, uh, we've had this recently, you need to check your proximity. Whisper is super tiny. It's a super tiny circle of what I can and cannot hear. Um, so if you have Whisper on and you're staying in a circle with a group of other law enforcement units, so I'll use that example, that happened yesterday. We were standing in a circle. I couldn't hear a majority of the people. I could only hear the two people directly beside me, and that's because I had it set on Whisper. So if you're ever on a scene and you're having issues hearing, try pressing Z. It'll change your proximity. It'll make things a whole lot easier for everybody. To change it, all you have to do is press Z on your keyboard. You see right now it's normal. If I press Z, it's changed to shouting. If I press Z again, it goes to whisper. Like I said, all that does is that changes your proximity. On a normal patrol, actually I can turn my voice chat on right now to, to show you guys. If you are ever unsure if it's picking up your voice, see right now that warning sign went away. That's what you're going to see. If you are not talking, whatever proximity you have right now, it's set on whisper, it's going to show up as blue. So if I stop talking for a second... It shows up as blue, and what that means is that it is not registering my voice, or any voice at all. Nothing is coming out of my mouth in-game, nobody's going to be able to hear me. When you're talking and it is registering, that's going to turn to yellow. Anyway, let's say I'm a civilian, I've just gotten pulled over um, by the cops, I know I have a warrant out for my arrest, I'm like, ah, oh, man, I really don't want to go to jail. I look down at the priority cooldown, it says none. That means a priority can be hosted, I'm like, I want to do a priority. That's what I want to do. Before I take off from the cops, before I initiate in the priority, we're going to go uh, open the text chat by pressing T on your keyboard. You're going to do backslash in progress. What that means is the priority is about to be in progress. And the reason that we make you do this before you start the priority is because, especially if you're in uh, vehicle pursuit, you're not going to be able to type this while you're driving and running away from the cops. So we highly suggest that you do it before the priority starts. It could be three seconds before you take off. But that way it's in chat and we don't have to worry about two priorities going on at once. But as you can see in the chat, I have most definitely been messing around with uh, the, the commands. I am a LEO on the server. I don't do anything civilian related. I actually had to go look at our civilian announcements to figure out the commands to tell you guys. But when you type in progress, I'm going to send it in the chat. You can see in the text chat it says there's a priority in progress. You cannot run from the police or cause any priorities, violent RP, until priorities are off hold. You can also see the priority cooldown in the bottom right hand corner. It's turned to priority in progress. What that means is somebody's running from the cop. Somebody's doing something that's requiring LEO attention. Um, that means that you cannot do a priority. We have recently ruled that 1070's foot pursuits running from them on foot is also considered a priority. We do need to keep that in mind. So that changed. Everybody on the server is going to see the same thing. They are all right now. Everybody in the server is seeing priority in progress. Once I'm done with my priority, they, the cops get me. I didn't want to go to jail, but they got me anyway. I'm in the back of the cop car. The scene is starting to die down. We don't need all the law enforcement attention. We're going to open our text chat again by pressing T backslash cooldown 20. What this does, you're going to watch the bottom corner where it says priority cooldown. It has reset the priority cooldown to 20 minutes. 20 minutes is our standard peacetime. I, I, I'm not going to call it peacetime. It's our standard break in between priorities. That is to give law enforcement a chance to settle down, to do some normal traffic stops. It also makes the civilians get a little bit more creative because if you're not having the ability to run from cops every time. So you have 20 minutes after priority is hosted. You can't do any priorities. You can't run from the cops, you can't shoot at the cops, you can't do anything along those natures. Anything that would require more than one officer on a scene. Underneath the priority cooldown, you see time and date. That is the real life time and date. It's set in uh, GMT time zone. I don't know why. This is an America-based server, but it's in GMT. Uh, but that's there in case you need to know what day it is. Current AOP. That does change. It currently says Sandy Shores because our AOP is Sandy Shores today, I think. I'm pretty sure. I just work here. Uh, server staff and people 
of that nature, so service staff or server directors or executive staff have the ability to change that. That is so we don't have people joining in session and putting in the text chat what's AOP. AOP is now on your screen. You can see it as soon as you load in. That is always updated. Whatever that says is what the current AOP is. Peacetime uh, is right next to the current AOP. You don't need to worry about that. That is a staff thing. We don't even mess with it because it's a mess. I think what that does is it makes it to where you can't pull out weapons, you can't shoot people, you can't hit people. We don't use that unless we have a big staff issue going on and we need the server pretty much locked down to stop people blowing up things or anything of that nature. We've also got our nearest postal. Very, very important for people, uh, for civilians in particular for calling in 911 calls as well as officers for calling in, well, for obvious reasons. Um, nearest Postal will be your best friend. When you make a 911 call, we need to know your, uh, your, your postal. That is, we can put that into our chat. If you have somebody you're trying to find and you get a hold of them and you're like, hey, what's your location? And they're like, oh, I'm at 711. You can open up your text chat. We actually have the postal script. So if you do postal and he said 711, 711, enter, it's actually going to draw a blue line to where that postal is. I'm not in a car, so it's not going to show up on my GTA map. Once you're in a car, it does show up on your map like a normal waypoint. That is pretty much the rundown of our basic interface. Um, We've kind of gone over everything that you need to know about how priorities work, how Mumble works, all of that fun stuff. So I think we're going to start getting into the actual menu portion of things, the actual roleplay portion of things. Um, one of the big things that we have available is F2 or no clip. Um, that is going to be extremely important, especially when you first spawn in like I did. You are more than likely going to spawn at this exact location every time you join the server. And for certain patrols, especially if you're, you know, city-based roleplay, you work for the LSPD, things like that, you don't want to have to drive all the way down there. So we do offer no clip to our members. If I press F2 on my keyboard right now, I'm going to go partially invisible. That's basically to let you know that you are in no clip. Um, I can... You know, get stuck in the floor, I can go way up high. There's not really any limitations to no clip in terms of the game itself. And we use this to get around. Um, like right now, we're just going to go over to the Sandy Shores airfield. Get out of the way of everybody. You can see right now I'm going extremely slow. Uh, if you look at the bottom, you can see all of the controls for how no clips works. If I press my left shift, it's going to speed me up. That's a lifesaver. That's super important information. Um, it's also super important that you don't keep it on that speed because you're going to fly everywhere like I am. You press F2, you're going to come out of F2. The only thing that we really ask about F2 is that you only use it when you're first loading into session and you have somewhere to be. I use it to get to my sheriff's office. Uh, PD uses it to get to the police department. We ask that you don't use it in scenes. We, don't ask, we ask that you don't use it to benefit yourself so if you're in a pursuit and you just press F2 we we don't allow that because you go invisible for everybody else and it's extremely unrealistic F2 is there for you to get to where you need to start your patrol and that is it now that we're at the Sandy Shores airfield we can go over character creation vehicle menus all of that fun stuff so if we go ahead and we press F1 that's gonna open up our V menu we are a V menu based server this is how we operate on everything I have options that you guys are not going to have. I have staff permissions in the server. You guys are not going to have band members and you are not going to have world related options. It's just how it goes. But I will go through everything else with you guys. Online players is extremely important. You see right now we have three players online. You guys are not going to have the options in red. Um, but you are going to be able to send a private message to teleport to a player, teleport in a player vehicle. I don't know if you guys will have summon, spectate, or toggle. I know you guys have toggle GPS. Send a private message is basically the in-game version of texting. If I send a private message, you see this pops up, I can type 200 characters, I press enter. What that's going to do is it's going to show up as an alert on the bottom right hand, mine in my directions, bottom left hand corner of the screen. It's going to show up exactly where that error message showed up. Only the person that you send it to can see it. That's, it's not going to be broadcasted. He or she is going to be the only people that see it. And it's a great way to talk back and forth without having Discord open or without actually texting them in real life. Teleport to player and teleport into player vehicle are pretty self-explanatory. We ask that you have permission from the person before doing this. Why? 
we've had way too many scenarios where people have teleported into people's vehicles, people have teleported to the player in the middle of a scene. So we've got default Danny here showing up on a shots fired scene because he decided he was going to teleport to somebody and not ask for permission. Teleporting the player and into their vehicle is really only used um, if you first log in, say you have a friend that you're getting in roleplay to roleplay with, and he's at his house and he's getting the scene set up, and you're like, hey, can I roleplay with you, and if so, can I teleport to you? Now, you could teleport to him, and it's going to save you the F2 trip. That's all that really is. Spectate player. I have no idea if you guys can use that. It does exactly what it says. It's spectate player. Uh, toggle GPS. We ask that you use this sparingly. Don't use it to metagame. Don't use it because, oh, you know, I just, I just wanted to see where he was. The only reason you should really use toggle GPS is if you're actually trying to meet up with somebody. I use it a lot in 1080s as a law enforcement officer. I'll toggle a GPS to the primary unit. That way, if they're not calling out 20s or they're not calling them out in a way that officers are going to be able to help them, I toggle GPS. It helps me get up to the pursuit. That's really the only situation I use it. Civs use it to find each other. That's another one of those you might want to have permission beforehand because that can cause staff issues, which I don't want you guys to have to go through. Next thing we have is player-related options. This is where you're going to be able to create your own character. We have player options, um, unlimited stamina, no ragdoll, never wanted. Never wanted does need to be checked. We ask that that's checked. Um, clean player clothes, dry player clothes, and then player scenarios. I don't recommend that you use player scenarios. I'm going to go over another emote menu that is a lot better and won't get stuck. These scenarios have a tendency of getting stuck in a loop to where you have to disconnect to fix it. Which we don't want. Player appearance. So we have two options for player appearances. And this is in any B-Menu server. We have PEDs and we have MP PEDs. I recommend that you use MP PED. I'll explain why in a minute. But I will go over your normal PED. So if you go to player appearance, uh, my recommendation if you're using this to create your custom character, you're going to go spawn PEDs, main PEDs, free mode 1 female or free mode 1 male. That's going to do is it's going to spawn you in with the most basic person you've ever seen before. From here, you can click backspace twice, go to PED customization, and that's where you're going to be able to customize, put on some masks, change your hair, your upper body, pants, you name it, you can change it. If you create your character, and let's say I create this guy, and I'm like, oh, I really, really like him. You can then go to saved, no, you can then go to save PED. You can save in your PED, once you save it, it is going to show up underneath saved pets. As you can see, I've got a couple of them already. But this is where that's going to show up. That's pretty much the basics to the actual ped customization. Now, the reason that I say I recommend using the MP ped is because if I were to actually save this character and something were to happen, my character were to die in game, I were to leave and relog, there's a high chance that when you respawn that character in they're going to have neon green hair and you can't get rid of it. That's just a 5M glitch. That's not something that we can help with. That's why I recommend using the MP ped. Because every time you spawn in the MP ped, you're going to have the right hair. It's not going to be neon green. You're not going to stand out like a highlighter. If you don't want to create your own custom ped, we do have spawn pets. Uh, male, female, and other are available to everybody. Um, and that's basically your pre-made NPCs within the game. We got a whole bunch of them. I'm not going to go through all of them, but as you can see, got a whole bunch of different people. These also have some customization. It's not going to be as much as if you were to create your own, but they do have some, depending on what the NPC has within the game. Next thing you have is the MP ped customization. It's the same exact thing as the ped customization, but different. Don't ask me how it's different. I have no idea. Where in the pad customization we would spawn in the default male or the default female, you actually get to create your male or female. You create it, you get spawned in here, you get locked into this. You can't leave unless you either save or exit without saving. It's annoying, but it makes sense. If you go to character inherits, this is where you choose your mother and your father and how much you want to resemble them, all of that fun stuff. Player appearance, this is where you can change your hair. Change your hair color, highlight, beards, if you're a male, 
Well, females don't get it. Surprise, surprise. Um, yeah, see, that's the neon green that your hair turns when you're a, an MP ped. Or a correction of ped. But in an MP ped customization, you could change that. Uh, face options, that's you can customize it. I usually feel like I'm playing Sims when I get to this point because it's so... Just, you can customize everything. It's kind of scary. Tattoo options. Tattoos are great. They're fun. Um, with this being 5M, you can actually stack tattoos. The only thing is, if you, let's say I want this tattoo, I have to press enter. When I press enter, then it is going to be applied. So when I swap, that tattoo stays on and I can add different tattoos. What I mean by stacking is if I take this tattoo and I put that on and that on and that on and I just go through, I don't recommend doing this, but I'm showing you. I now have a whole lot of tattoos. If I back out, all of those tattoos stay. Badge options, or badge overlays, my apologies, is actually t-shirt designs. I don't know why they put it in tattoos. Um, if I were to put a shirt on, you'd see that it's got all kinds of... Uh, t-shirt decoration so if you grab like a plain white t-shirt you can go through badge overlays it's the same thing as tattoos if you press enter it'll stay and you can put on different ones I use this option a lot character clothes is gonna be the same thing that we did in the regular pad change your clothes surprise bet you didn't see that one coming we got a whole bunch of different options we do have custom EUPs as you can see we got guns we've got belts we've got all of that fun stuff Look, there you go. The badge overlay that I put on was Kiflom. So, if you want the first one, Kiflom is definitely definitely what you need. Um, that's just, that's lovely. If you have an issue, this is a perfect example. If you have an issue, you would see right next to my armpit, my arms are glitching. You're like, oh no, what am I going to do? My arms are glitching. Upper body is going to change your arm glitches. So, a lot of times, if you put on a new shirt, you just have to scroll through this. There is no easy way of, of solving that. But you see there... It's a Meriwether Kiflom shirt. We're security for Kiflom. But, say we get all that done, we have props, we can add a hat, and we can add glasses, we can add all of that. We can then save the character. I'm just going to say this is test. And let's say I create a male character on accident. Ah, dang, I didn't, didn't want to do that. I can exit without saving. If I go to my saved characters, I can just spawn it in. My hair is going to be the same. It's not going to be neon green. That's why I recommend doing the the MPED, MP ped. With our server, we actually have an option. If you hold Y, it's going to bring up this nice little menu here. I love this menu. I'm obsessed with this menu. I use it way too much. What this does is you can take off clothes individually. So I took my hat off, and I didn't have to go through the menu. It works for every article of clothing that you have on. If you don't have something on, I don't have a mask on, I click that, it says you're already wearing that. So it's not going to let me take off something that I don't have. If you take off your hat, and you're like, okay, I, I, you know, I'm messing around with all the options, I'm taking everything off, and I'm like, oh, i got to go somewhere. I need all of that back. Instead of clicking individually, you can press on this little reset button and everything comes back. Moving on from characters... Moving on from characters, we go back to the F1 menu, player-related options. We also have our weapons options. As you can see, a lot of these are locked. We've recently changed server hosting, and with that, the weapon options are linked to your 5M... No. The, the weapons are linked to your Discord civilian role. If you are a probationary civilian, the only thing you're going to have option, uh, available... The only... English is hard, guys. The only thing that you're going to have available to you is a flare gun. Me being an executive staff, I do have options to more than what you're going to have. But as you rank up in civilian, you are going to have options to more things. If I were to grab a handgun, say I wanted a combat pistol, I can equip. I can change my tint. Um, say I want the LSPD tint. I want a flashlight. I want the default clip. That's how that works. Super easy. If I have a set loadout that I want to save, I can save the loadout. I can load that in later. For example, I have my BCSO loadout. When I go on duty, I just have to click that button. I have all of the weapons that I need. I have my pistol, my taser, my rifle, my shotgun, nightstick, flashlight. I also have a fire extinguisher. 
that is just a quick and easy way, instead of having to reset your weapons every single time, you just go to weapon loadouts. Um, there's also no clip here. Instead of pressing F2, if you want to take the time and go through the menu, it does the same thing as F2. It's just, it's the same thing. Moving on from player-related options as a whole, we get into vehicle options. Um, it's kind of the same thing. Vehicle spawners are linked to your civilian rank. So you can see, military is locked, trains are locked. Again, I have access to more things than what a probationary civilian is going to have or anything like that. So if I were to spawn in just a random car, let's say I wanted the Dominator. Spawn this in. I've got the car in. That's as easy as it is to spawn in the car. If you're searching and you're like, oh, I know what this car is, I don't know what it's under, you could spawn it by vehicle model. Dominator. I have no idea if this is going to work. Yeah, okay. So if I spawn in, if I know the name of it, I know the spawn code, and I do that, it's going to spawn it in for me, which is a very nice feature of 5M. Once you have your vehicle spawned in, vehicle options is available to you. This is where you're going to do your customization that you would normally do in a Los Santos Customs. You can repair the vehicle, you can wash the vehicle, you can manually set the dirt. I guess if you're going off-roading, you want your truck to look cool, set it up a whole bunch of dirt. I personally don't like it. You can talk your vehicle on and off. As you can hear, that just shut my engine off. Start it back up. I can set a custom license plate. Um, if I wanted to just set it to Morgan, I can do that. And that's going to set the plate, as you can see. Uh, license plate style is going to change the actual license plate itself. Mod menu. This is going to be your Los Santos Customs upgrades, so to speak. You got your engines, your brakes, you can change your horn, your suspension, your armor. Everything here is pretty much self-explanatory, if it's not. Um, you can see in the bottom of the mod menu, it gives you a quick little rundown of what each option does. Got your vehicle colors. Vehicle liveries. Uh, this is more so for emergency vehicles than personal civilian cars. Vehicle extras. Every now and then you're going to find vehicles with vehicle extras. There is no way of easily telling what each extra does. You literally have to go in and, and click on and off. This one takes the bed cap off. So if I can leave that unchecked, I can go back. Vehicle doors. You can open up doors one by one. Some of them will have extras. Bombay. You can also close and open them all at once. You can also remove doors. This one's always fun. The, the doors just fall off. If you wanted to drive around with no doors, no hood, and no trunk, that's the fastest way to do it. You can also delete the removed doors. Um, that, I think, is... I think I messed that one up. That one, I think... Uh, we can double check. Let's repair. I think what that one does is, instead of having it fall on the ground, it just deletes them. It does. Okay, yeah, so if you don't want to leave your doors laying on the ground, you don't want people stealing them or something, I don't know. You can check that, and that's just going to delete them instead of dropping them on the ground. We have to repair the vehicle to use the next option. Vehicle windows. This is if an officer ever asks you to roll your windows down. Here you go. You roll them down, you can roll them back up. The only time this doesn't work is if when you break your windows, and there actually is no window. Toggle vehicle alarm. Imagine that, it toggles the alarm. I have a cop horn set. That's why that was a cop horn. Uh, you cycle through vehicle seats, what that does, you can see I'm in the driver's seat, now I'm in the passenger seat, I'm in the back seat, I'm in the other back seat, and I'm back to the driver's seat. Engine always on. This is so if you step out of the vehicle, you can see right there the vehicle's still on. Uh, this, it was, this was probably a really awkward transition, I'm sorry, my game crashed, they were restarting the server and failed to inform me of this beforehand. But that's pretty much all we have for the vehicle options. You can show vehicle health, um, which gives you that nice annoying menu at the top. I wouldn't worry about having that on, it doesn't really tell you much, except... You know, it just gets in your way. Next thing we're going to go over, uh, save vehicles. Obviously, same thing as saving the pads. You can save your current vehicle. You can come in. You can access it later. Personal vehicle. This one is something that not a lot of people know about that I feel like we should be telling you guys. This is what law enforcement use most of the time for their vehicles. If you set your current vehicle that you're in to your personal vehicle, you can then manually access everything that's here, even when you're outside of the vehicle. So you can see, my truck is on, if I click this button, even though I'm outside of my vehicle, it shuts the engine on and off. I can force the vehicle lights on, 
That means even in the daytime, my vehicle lights are going to come on. I can lock my vehicle doors. This is why law enforcement use this. Nobody can get inside of your vehicle, not even yourself, till you unlock the vehicle. You can also manually sound your horn. Great for people walking by. I don't know. You see videos of pranks about that all the time. Maybe you can use that. You can also toggle your security alarm. Also, another good thing to have remotely. From this menu, you can also access your doors. The same thing as the vehicle options doors. You can just do it manually. Other than that, that is pretty much it for the vehicle portion of things. We do have the DV script, so if you just do slash DV, at least the vehicle that you're in or next to, uh, that gets kind of iffy. You just gotta be standing in the right spot. Sometimes it has a mental breakdown. It won't delete it even though you're sitting inside of it. In which case, you can go to vehicle options and... I lied. No, you can't. We used to have an option where you could delete it. But if DV isn't working, you just gotta fight with it. That's, that's all I can tell you. Uh, like I said, you guys aren't gonna have world-related options. Miscellaneous options you're more than likely going to have. Maybe not as many as I do. But that is okay. Um, disable controller support. I don't even know what that does. I use a controller. So... I don't have that on. Um, show MPH and KMH. That's in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. I don't even think you can see it for me. Um, oh, because I'm not in a vehicle. Look, I'm big smart. If I were to grab my contender, you can see right above the mumble menu uh, is zero miles per hour. Underneath the, the mumble menu is the KMH. I have that turned on, literally, so so the miles per hour bumps up, and I can see it. Um, going back into miscellaneous settings. Keybind settings, if you want to be able to point, you have to have finger point controls on. That means is if you double-click your right analog stick on your controller, or you just press B on your keyboard, you are then able to point. This is something you have to turn on. 5M does not have that on for you. Recording controls, if you turn this on, that basically means when you press F1, you're going to start recording through the Rockstar Editor. Like, so, I lied. They've changed that. Okay, so you have to set up your, your hotkeys. They've changed everything around. So you have to set up your own hotkeys for the recording controls. I don't like that on. I go, manually go through my menu. Uh, Minimap controls, as you can see, Z on the controller, down on the arrow. What that does is that actually just expands your map. Just like that. If you do not have that turned on, when you press Z, nothing happens. It's not like it takes your map away, anything like that. It's just nothing happens. If we go back, location display. I recommend that you guys have this checked. It's going to overwrite your nearest postal, which could definitely be an issue. But it gives you your direction of travel and the nearest road, as well as your general area. So right now, I'm facing eastbound near Joshua, the Grand Sonora Desert. But I can't see my post code, so it's kind of a... Iffy situation, it's do you want to know your postcode or do you want to know your street name? Showing time on screen, that 12 at the bottom of the corner, that's what that is. That makes it go away. Show player blips. Do not get this checked. Don't check this. This shows you where everybody is on the map. You will get in trouble if we find out that you have this on. Same thing as the player names. We actually recommend that you don't have that on. It kind of ruins the whole roleplay experience when you see somebody's name floating above their head. When was the last time you went to Walmart and someone's name was just floating above their head, right? Respawn is default MP. I would not want you to do that. Um, that gets kind of glitchy. Hide radar. I hide your map. If you don't want your map on at all, hide HUD. Hides everything except for our priority information. Lock camera Rotations, I would not leave these checked. This is, it stops you from doing this. It, then, you can only go up and down. It's very choppy. It's a lot easier if you don't have those checked. I don't know what that button does, so don't click it. And then you say personal settings. When you say personal settings, everything that you've just changed within the M menu, or the F1 menu, in its entirety, is going to be saved. So next time I load in, all of the options that I just messed with are going to be loaded in the same exact way that they are right now. The next thing that we're going to go over is actually our uh, interaction menu. When you press M, this is the screen that it brings up. We have the LEO toolbox, the fire toolbox, and the sieve toolbox. LEO toolbox has LEO options. We're not going to go over these. This is something that if you are law enforcement in our server, you will get explained 
what all of those mean. We are, however, going to go over Civ Toolbox. So, actions, uh, hands up, hands up, kneel. Uh, does what you think it does. We also have text shortcuts for that. So, if I do slash H U K, it's going to do the same exact thing that it did when I press the button. This is just a nice little, nice little shortcut to that. Um, inventory, we don't really mess with that. BAC is a big one. If you were role-playing that you just had a drink, you're out drunk driving, um, and you set your blood alcohol contact, it gives you the legal limit is .08. Let's say I only had one drink, I'm a .01, and I click enter. BAC level set .01. Now, if I were on a scene and an officer says, do you mind blowing into this breathalyzer? And I say, okay. LEO actually have a breathalyzer. When they run that breathalyzer, for me, it is now going to show that I'm a .01. And that kind of gets rid of the text chat portion of that. Um, it makes it a little bit more realistic. Drop weapon. If you have your hands up and you're holding on to a pistol and you're just seriously having issues dropping the weapon, uh, that is an option that is available to you that's going to get the weapon out of your hand. That way they're not sitting there yelling at you. Drop the weapon, drop the weapon, and you're like, I can't. Cops don't listen to you, trust me. Here um, is the adverts. These are extremely important for civilians. Uh, these are, I mean, exactly what they say, adverts. Uh, as you can see, we got a whole bunch of different adverts that you can use. Um, if we were to go YouTube, and I were to press enter, you can see right above my map, it comes up with a YouTube advertisement. Everybody in the server can now see what I posted. This is for things if you're doing like a job role play, your post op. You're like, oh, we're at the office. You can send that out for everybody to know. This is one of those things that um, we also ask that you use accordingly. Don't go, you know, just posting random stuff. Don't go, um, yeah, using it to slander people. Use it accordingly. Use it professionally. That is pretty much it for the menu side of thing. The one last thing that I am going to go over in terms of the basics of Backbone Roleplay is our F3 menu. I told you guys earlier that there was a menu that had emotes within the player appearance options. Um, I said, I, you know, don't use that. It gets stuck. You have to disconnect and reconnect to reset it. This is the other emote menu that I was talking about. So if we go, uh, this is, once I press F3, this menu comes up. We have a whole bunch of menu, or emotes that are available to you. And if you, let's say, trying to find, if I wanted to do a flip, I press enter, I do a flip. If it's an emote that you get stuck in a loop, or you're halfway through, so if I, you can also, as I was just about to do, um, if you open up your text chat, do backslash E space, and then the name of the emote that you want to do, that also works. So if you know the name of an emote, you don't want to scroll through the menu, that's a very quick option for you to do that. If you are doing a emote, let's say cop 2 is crossing your arms, and you're like, man, how do I not, you know, how do I get out? Well, you could press F3 and go to cancel. Another shortcut is if you press X on your keyboard, it's going to cancel whatever emote you have going on, which is really really nice I wish just it's one of those things I wish somebody would have told me when I first started role-playing because um, I would take the time and go through to find cancel emote the last thing that we're gonna go over is walking styles these are part of just kind of how you customize your character just a little bit more so you can see this is the normal walking style for the male character we have walking styles let's say we swap it to cop it's gonna change the complete way that you walk you're gonna walk faster or slower you're gonna change your steps you're gonna change how your arms swing armored is one of my favorite ones to, to make an example of because you just you look so goofy when you walk around like this there are endless opportunities with the walking styles um, I don't really mess around with them too much but it's it's interesting moods is kind of the same thing it's gonna change how things work this one in particular changes your facial expressions if I go electrocuted you see my mouth is moving like I'm getting tased it's the only one that I really know what it does in terms of changing 
But when you're in the server, you guys are more than welcome to mess with the with the F3 menu, uh, which is this menu right here. Other than that, I do believe that's pretty much the basics of Backbone roleplay. Uh, I can't think of anything else that I did not put in the Google Docs, or that I did put in the Google Docs, that I haven't gone over here. We've gone over pad customization, vehicle customization, all of our civilian-related emote menus and interaction menus and all of that fun stuff. So, I think that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys found this useful. You learned a couple things. If you didn't, that's okay, too. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video.